Now, ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Tumpongeze Kwa Makofi. After taking the oath of office, President William Ruto is facing a tougher task of coming up with a cabinet that is a true picture of Kenya without breaching the pre-election agreements with various leaders before the polls in the face of pressure to reward loyalists. Already some of his close allies who have been with him in the campaign trenches are angling for the limited cabinet secretary slots that is kept at 22 amid rush by some opposition politicians to join Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance with an eye on plum government appointments. Well, um, I think you try to be very careful uh, to combine interest with ability because his main thing is to deliver on his promises and he cannot deliver on his promises if he has the wrong people <laughs> in the cabinet yeah? the wrong people in terms of ability capacity of course whoever he puts in the in the cabinet must have two or three qualifications one must be loyal to Ruto mm -hmm. there's no discussion about that must be loyal two must be competent ability not a sycophant but somebody who can tell the president thinks something is happening, something is not right. And the president then should have that ability to listen and to good advice. And if he does not have that good uh, ability, then uh, the cabinet will be just full of sycophants and nothing else, uh, which is not good. According to Professor Masharia Munene, some of the elected members of parliament could consider quitting their positions to join the executive to play bigger roles in the new administration. And so you expect a few people to be considered. Where Tangula is out because he's got a bigger job. He's a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? uh, he delivered Bungoma, <laughs> so he became speaker. King is out because he's the speaker of the Senate. So those are, are already taken care of eh? in their own way. And the other people who are in Parliament who are likely to hold key po the parliamentary positions. Therefore, they do not have to be in the cabinet because they are needed in parliament to shepherd some things. So he will take all those into account. Is this person really necessary to be in the cabinet or in parliament? Where is he more effective or better? So some people will be left in parliament because they will be more effective there <laughs> in uh, supporting the Ruto agenda. Others, he might decide this person, I think in terms of delivering on some things, would be very good. Some of the President Ruto allies who are contemplating to quit their elective seats and join the cabinet include Garissa Township Member of Parliament Eden Duale, Elgeyo Marakot Senator Kipchumba Murkomen, and Kandara Member of Parliament Alice Wahome. So he has a big pool. The, the, the main thing is that he has a big pool. And after all, there are only 22 slots. <laughs> of uh, cabinet positions eh? mm -hmm. and if he goes um, the Uhuru will behave like Uhuru he creates assistant ministers <laughs> only the constitution does not have mm -hmm. assistant ministers but it does not forbid it <coughs> see that's the principle if it is not forbidden you can you can do it <laughs> if, if it's forbidden don't do it but assistant ministers are not forbidden although they are not provided for so who came uh, with an ingenious way, called them CASs. <laughs> they are just assistant ministers. <laughs> so there are a lot of people who, who can be made assistant ministers, but the minister, the CS, he needs to be very careful that he puts in people who perform. They are loyal to him, and they perform, and they have confidence in themselves, and they will be honest with him. However, with the cabinet slots limited to 22, President Ruto is likely to find himself on the horns of dilemma over half of the appointments he promised to deliver to women during the campaign period on a move to achieve the two-thirds gender rule. Okay, most people of both genders would want equity, mm -hmm. proper. Again, yes, that should be taken into account. It should be very serious. And there are a lot of good women around who qualify to be in cabinet, and they will be in cabinet. But the bottom line is, 
don't put somebody there just because she's a woman. No. Again, competence, loyalty, and then gender. But you don't start with gender. <laughs> And then, so you end up putting uh, people who have no business being there, mm -hmm. which is wrong. There are enough women for him to find competent ones who are also loyal. It would be a tragedy if he puts somebody there just because somebody is a woman. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's a tragedy. But they are there it's for him to, to decide. It is a decision. A number of names have since been mentioned as possible appointees to the cabinet and key positions, including principal secretaries and parastatal heads. The rewards of his loyalists, including losers in the concluded polls, the position of chief administration secretary controversially created in the Jubilee administration's second term, are an option that President Ruto could consider the High Court, however, last year declared them unconstitutional. Those expected in the new cabinet include Amani National Congress leader Musalim Davadi, who is expected to be the prime CS, former National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi, who dropped his presidential bid to back President Ruto, is also angling for a salute. It is the same case for former Tharakanithi Senator Kithuri Kindiki, who nearly became Dr. Ruto's running mate before he was sidestepped in favor of Rigavi Gashagwa. Former governors Salim Mvuria, Josvat Nanok, and Alfred Mutua have also stepped up their lobbying to join the cabinet, as has UDA National Chairman Johnson Mudama. Also angling for the slots are former CS Charles Keter and former Gatundu South MP Moses Kuria. Other loyalists angling for the plum appointments are Davis Chirichir and Felix Kuski. Chirichir, who was kicked out of office in 2015 over corruption allegations but was never charged, made a comeback to the government early this year as the chief of staff in the deputy president's office. From Kisi, Charles Nyachai and former MP Ezekiel Moshugu are also seeking to catch the eye of President Ruto as he embarks on assembling a team that will bring his bottom-up economic model to fruition. This comes as the Commander-in-Chief will also have to weigh which current cabinet secretaries in the former President Uru Kenyatta's administration can fit with his agenda Moreover, it also remains to be seen if President Ruto will accommodate as mere faithfuls to his team this as he called for a cohesive political environment where no other is left behind. Although of course, that does not preclude the possibility of appointing people in Azimio. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Because even in the Azimio, there are people who are very competent and can be loyal. They can do a good job. So he wear all these things, uh, and we, we've seen some of them uh, recently have been shifting gears, eh? and they've been saying, you know, I, I was for, I was threatened, with, so I had to be, <laughs> I had to be there because I was threatened. My survival was threatened, or whatever it is. And uh, he would take all those things into account, mm -hmm. and there is something to be said about appointing somebody from the other camp because that person is competent, and he's known that once he's there, he'll be dedicated to the job, and knows what to do. Mm, that's the thing. Um, pretensions of party loyalty, just pretensions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you'll be taken into account, but no, they are not the deciding factor. The cabinet nominees will be vetted at individual level by the parliamentary committee, and if approved by the National Assembly, they'll be appointed by the president before being sworn in to assume leadership in their respective ministries. Reporting for Ebru TV, my name is Davis Beria.